Hi everyone, my name is Ella Dev Verma and you know to introduce me as a model, a content creator and many wonderful things. But when somebody asks me, who are you and what do you do? My first inclination is almost <coughs> always an artist. An artist whose proudest creation is my own life. I mean, I've, I've had a difficult life. You know, I've had a lot of struggles, but here I am today. Four to five years ago, if you have told me about it, you don't worry, hang in there. In the past few years, you're going to be one of the biggest memes of your country. I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> but look at how we are here. But, you know, the reality is at the end of the day that this artistry and this ability to create our own life and take charge of our narratives is something that is so innate to human beings. Something that is almost divine. It used to be actually. I'm going to tell you an old Hindu legend, which goes a little bit like this. Human beings, just like you and me, only many, many years ago, possessed powers that were divine. It put them at par with the gods. And eventually, <laughs> humans did as humans do, and they figured out ways to use their power for bad things. This troubled the gods, and they called for a meeting, and they wanted to figure out what they in Sanuta. We need to do something about them. They're misusing their powers. In the meeting, eventually, they drew the conclusion that we must strip them of their power and hide it somewhere. Resolution. But a problem is that humans ki divinity could chupaya them up with that. One god suggested, put it on the highest mountain top. Thodi discussion ke baad they realized ki insaan hai, divine or not, zibdi thani hai, chal jayega. So, somebody suggested the deepest ocean floor. And they realized, abhi nahin, kuch aur centuries ki advancement ke baad, maha bhi pol jayega. Then they eventually thought, okay, maybe outside of their own planet into outer space. Hi, Chandrayaan. <laughs> Needless to say, there was a very difficult situation and they couldn't figure out what to do with this human's divinity that is being used for bad things. That is when Brahmaji came in and he said, strip the man of his divinity and hide it inside of him. For the man will climb mountains, search oceans, even venture out into outer space. But very few will ever take the time to actually look within themselves. Now... <laughs> Now, before you, you know, pull out forceps and knives trying to gouge out your divinity from inside of you, it's not you know, as technical or as logical as it may seem. This is more so to deliver, deliver a story about the importance of reflection. Not only understanding who you are, but why you are, and why you feel the things you feel, why you do the things you do, why are you triggered by the things that trigger you. Understanding where you come from and who you're made of is the prime important step of creating your dream life. It's very important to be able to take control of the narrative that you feel about yourself. And often it is very difficult to because it's influenced by many factors that are out of your control. How you see yourself right now as 19, 20 year olds, it's 19, 20 year olds of also other people telling you who you are. Now I always say this, every single person in this room has an insecurity, physical, emotional, otherwise, I have my own. But ask yourself this, did you have that insecurity before somebody else gave it to you? Were you too short, too tall, too big, too small before somebody told you? And that's where you take the power back. When you trace your fears and your insecurities to the root, you always realize that they almost exclusively come from external sources. You know, human beings biologically, we're born to be afraid of heights, the dark and loud noises. That's all that we were given to survive. The rest of it is made up. You don't need to have jitters when you're on stage. You don't need to be afraid when you're making new friends. But here we are, afraid of rejection, afraid of fumbling, afraid of saying the wrong thing. But the reality is you are more capable than you believe. And you weren't instilled with the fears that you carry with you. And it's about time that you let go of these things. I, as a transgender woman, have taken control of my life. And I've changed a few things about myself. And people say, that it is going against nature. I agree, it is going against nature. But that is the gift that human beings have been given. Unlike other living species on this planet, we have the ability to move away from our biological blueprint. We don't have to live in the trees and do nothing and just reproduce and be off of the face of the planet. Our ability, our gift, our essence as a species to create and move beyond. Now, am I going against nature? Most definitely. But am I hurting nature? I don't think so. 
the last time I checked, the carbon emissions of a sex change variable. It's not that big. <laughs> and now coming back, you know, taking charge of your own life, I'd like to tell you instances of my own life and my own journey, not only in terms of my gender, but also my professional life and my personal life through relationships. So I grew up in an environment. My family, you know, it was a joint family. We came from a very conservative, <laughs> without wanting to hurt any sentiments. I have a background of UP, Haryana, and I got very, very lucky. And you know, there's certain things that come with that kind of mindset. And I grew up in an environment that wasn't really welcoming of change. Things were done a certain way. You were supposed to look a certain way. You were supposed to talk a certain way. I mean, birthdays for me, <laughs> people would come home and the women would rush to the kitchen, the men would rush to the living room. And then that's how the way it's always been. I never saw the women in my family drive. Mm -hmm. I never saw the women in my family take a stand for themselves. I saw women in my family being nice, 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 waiting for somebody to be nice to them back. And so when it came my own time to realize that I am like, feel like a woman and I want to be a woman, I started to emulate those toxic things that I saw growing up. I became an absolute people pleaser because I associated the idea of womanhood with suffering. And suffering is sugar-coated and sold to many, many, I wouldn't say women, but many people across all nations, all cultures, all religions, as this savior story that eventually, when you be nice for long enough, somebody is going to save you. One of my favorite stories where I get my name from, Cinderella, that's where I get Ella from. You know what she did? She served the stepmother, she served the stepsister, and then eventually, because she was so wonderful, a fairy godmother came and everything fell into place. But sadly, in real life, that doesn't necessarily happen. And sometimes, you have to be your own fairy godmother. Even though it's very, very difficult, you have to realize that you have the power to save yourself from your circumstances. Because at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. My favorite quote of all time is, everything, it's quite casual, but everything is figure outable. There is nothing that cannot be done. The human brain, you know, often we try to avoid situations that would not do that. Okay, I go to the gym, when I get a little stamina, you know, I'll take that job or I'll give that interview when I'm prepared enough. Okay, I'm not going to do I'll take that job or I'll give that interview when I'm prepared enough. But the thing about the human, be uh, the brain, the human brain is, you will pre be prepared enough when you do enough. When you apply for the job and you work on the job and you learn on the job, that is when you be good enough and competent enough. When you actually go to the gym is when you start to see progress. When you actually take that risk is when you actually open the possibility of wearing the good things that come from taking risks. I, for example, you know, went against my own family, my own values, and it wasn't easy. It doesn't be, it's not easy for anyone. Come on. Biological, transgender, men or women. Life is difficult for everyone. I don't want you to think of me as this victim who had a very difficult life because there were, the government wasn't changing my documents. You know who else the government is struggling with? Widows of this country. Old people in this country. People who come from different, you know, minorities are also suffering. So it's not an exclusively transgender problem. But it's important to remember that you are not the cause of your problem. Because I only allowed my suffering to continue because I felt worthy of it. I created a narrative in my mind that the bad things, be it the people laughing at me in my school, me not being able to get an education because my documents were changed in time, me missing out on an opportunity because of you know my gender or my sexuality. <coughs> I started to believe that it was my fault because like I mentioned, I didn't grow up in an environment that instilled high self-esteem in me. And eventually, through life and through experiences, you know, I exposed myself to opportunities and people and stories. And I eventually learned to ask myself, where was my fault? It actually came from a friend. I remember I was having a very difficult time and I completely broke down in front of this friend. And he said this one thing. He said, I know you're having a very difficult time and you're struggling a lot, but please remember that all of it's not your fault. I mean, how can it be? And that at 18 years old was the first time in my life that I sat down and I replayed my life, all the bad instances. And I asked, where was it me? If people laughed at me, what did I do? Nothing. I was a child trying to be happy. I mean, there was a lovely woman on this stage dancing when we opened the show. I love dancing like that. But also, if a young man danced like that, it was a problem. Because when you got off stage, you have to face the boys of your class. 
if I liked wearing makeup and it made me happy, it's a very trivial thing. But also when your father sees that, it's not such small of a deal. And so eventually I realized that everything I do that makes me happy ends up in a bad consequence. Ella does something that makes her happy. People laugh. Ella does something that makes her happy. Father is ashamed. Ella does something that makes her happy. Meme pages just content mil jata So it's... <laughs> but it's always remember, important to remember and be grounded in your own reality and understand where you come from. And being grounded in your reality, not only where you come from, but also who you are worthy of and what you deserve. The thing is, you see what you believe. When you tell yourself a certain thing or you tell your brain to believe certain ideas, your brain will actively pick up things in your surroundings. So, before my transition, when I wasn't as comfortable with myself and I'd had a few bad experiences at school, you know, I was used to walking down the school corridors and people, you know, kind of looking around. So, I was very, very insecure. And even after my transition, people look at me. But something tells me it's not because of the same reason. But in my mind, I was constantly conscious. Every time I would walk by a group of guys and they were, you know, giggling or sniggering, I'd be like, oh my God, it's about me. <laughs> because I've carried those beliefs with me for so long. And it's very important to unlearn. You know, we always focus on trying to learn more, grasp more, do more, try more. But sometimes it's important to just take breaks and break down. <laughs> this is also something that I learned very, very different, yeah, in a very, very difficult way. Because you have to remember, no matter who I am now, I was raised as a boy. And not just any boy, a boy, you know, you know, UPR in the background, you don't cry, you don't show your emotions. If you feel any emotion, the answer is, <laughs> you know, it's not healthy. So, when I went on estrogen, estrogen makes you feel a lot of things. And it was almost as if the last 18 years of my life, all those suggested emotions came to me at once and I didn't know how to deal with them. And that is when I realized how important it is to feel things. Often people tell me that, you know, you're so lucky your parents were with you. You're so lucky you look a certain way. You're educated. You live in the city. You're so privileged. Why are you crying about your problems? But the reality is, it's it's such an unfair expectation to expect people to not cry about their problems because somebody has it worse. Somebody will always have it worse. Why are you crying? There's people dying at war. If I don't cry, that doesn't change. If I don't cry, there's people dying at war and here I am with suppressed emotions. Who won? Nobody. Emotions don't have to be a competition. Emotions don't have to be a war. You don't have to explain why you feel certain things. I'm not saying be irrational and, you know, go around town and play a ruckus. But it's very important to feel what you feel when you're feeling it because if you don't, it grows into something that, you know, spirals and eats you up from the inside. And that's each of good. Now, when I went into my uh, when I went into my pageant, that is when you know I heard a lot of things about me when I got on the internet. People said things like I was ruining the society, I was a bad example for the youth, I was teaching them these values that aren't our own. But the reality is, these values are so deeply enmeshed in our culture. Whether you believe it religiously or culturally, the values of acceptance and at least being good people. Good karma is the essence of this country. This is peace and love. So coexisting is the very essence of who we are. And so that is all that I ask of the people around me. So remember, what are we actually fighting for? If I go into the operating theater tomorrow and get a sex change, who's bothered? Nobody. If I, you know, if my blouse is slightly deep on the internet, but there's men openly urinating on the streets, but nobody says a thing. So you have to remember who you have to prioritize. And it was very easy for me to not take the internet and not take the outer influences seriously. Because like I said, I worked on myself and I figured out who I was. And as I come to the conclusion of this talk, you know, I want to tell you that as someone who has lost the ability to reproduce, in our culture, it's very, very important to you know. As long as those people live and those stories live and those hearts flutter when they think of me, I live.